Look, I'm not happy about this either, but it's gonna be like a seven hour drive to get to Portland to do some photography in the Columbia River Gorge. It's just gonna be a lot better for both of us if I just hit you over the head and you wake up, come to, and we're already there. Sorry. You okay? You took that pretty hard. But we're here. We made it to Panther Creek Falls. Well, not up here, it's actually way down there. But unfortunately, to get to the bottom, you gotta go down there. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell with the video, but it's about a 20 foot drop. And so there's this little, uh, looks like dental floss that I'm supposed to trust my life with. I'm gonna keep my weight on the rocks and myself and just use this to stabilize myself because I definitely don't trust this thing. Let's give it a try. This is it! And if there's a more beautiful place on the planet, I don't know what it is. I'm sorry I'm yelling it. The river is incredibly loud. I'm soaked. I'm muddy everywhere from getting down here. This is what photography is about. This just makes me feel alive being here. I mean, look at it. It's incredible how the water cascades down everywhere. Just waterfalls every direction standing right on the edge of another one. There's moss all over, trees falling down. It's just tremendous. It's tremendous. For the composition here, I love these logs in the foreground. I'm gonna tip you around to kind of what I'm seeing. These logs right here, they have to be in the frame. Just how they crisscross and make some interest really takes the photo to another level as far as I'm concerned. And then the waterfall itself, I'm gonna, cro I'm gonna crop its head off. Just like in a portrait where you would, you know, not always leave too much head space. Uh, you can cut across the head, it's okay. And I think with the waterfall, it's the same thing. So I'm gonna stand here, get my feet a little bit wet, and try to shoot forward with these logs in the foreground the water in the background. I've got to be very careful with my lens that it doesn't get soaked because once it's wet, it's hard to get it all dry and get the streaks off. So I'm going to be really careful with that. We'll see what we can make. A few notes about the gear that I'm using for this shoot because it becomes relevant later on. First of all, my tripod and ball head setup. I've always used the Faisal CT3442 and the Really Right Stuff ball head for years, and that's probably the part of my gear that there's very little chance of me switching. I'm really, really happy with it. You can see my full review of it at improvephotography.com slash tripods. Now, what you just saw me swing out of the backpack was the bottom section of the, of the Mindshift gear rotation 180 horizon bag and for a situation like this at a waterfall it's so nice to be able to access some of the things from the bag without taking it off and setting it down in the water and things like that but sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain to get to that bottom section the little fanny pack portion when you are you know when it's just in the car or when you do have it set on the ground things like that and so I am considering taking a closer look at the f-stop on you that's one that Nick uses and uh, it's a newer bag it's one that has definitely caught my eye so I'm going to take a look at that and then for my camera and lens, this is the relevant part. I'm shooting the Fuji X Pro 2 with the Fuji 10 to 24 millimeter lens. It's Fuji's only wide angle zoom lens. So if you're shooting landscapes, that's pretty much what you're going to be using. And that's gonna be a little bit of a problem later on.
photography is all about the adventure. That's what it is. It's about an adventure and learning something new, an adventure and being somewhere like this, an incredible location. And I have always loved my Fuji photography gear. This is my beloved X-Pro2. But I think it's time to dump it. I, as much as I love the lightweight, the image quality, the form factor, the usability, I love the, the aperture dial and everything that it does for me. It fits my style of photography. But photography is adventure. And what's completely unacceptable in the Fuji system is what we're seeing right there. Do you see it? It's a warning. It says turn the camera off and turn it on again. Unfortunately, as wonderful as all the other Fuji lenses are, the only real wide angle zoom lens they have is the 10 to 24. And this is the bane of my existence. It's not weather sealed. And this is where I am. Landscape photography is about adventure. I can't get there with this lens. I don't know how many times I have spent trips in, uh, you know, Iceland and China where I'm in the bathroom in the hotel with a blow dryer blow drying this lens because when it gets wet it causes a lens communication error and it dies. It, uh, it doesn't work. Not for a landscape photographer. Not when you're going to be in places like this almost every time you go shoot. I own two of these lenses because one is always crapped out on me uh, when I'm in rough conditions like this with a spray of the waterfall. It's enough to stop it. Sometimes it's a lot less than this and it'll die on me. And so as much as I love Fuji gear, uh, I think I may have to switch to something else. Fuji has promised us an 8 to 16 2.8 and next year, I hope that does it, but I'm not sure I can wait that long. Slept in a cheap motel last night, and now it's time to head home. I'm excited to see my wife and the kids, but on the way home, I want to see if I can find a location to stop at, and for that, the really good photo spots app. Let's take a look. All I've got to do is say locations around me. And these are the four and five star locations around me. And this is just everything around me. So I went to Sahali Falls yesterday. Kusa Falls I went to yesterday. This one shows it's 51 miles. Now, I made a mistake in the design here. Uh, that arrow pointing doesn't mean that's the direction. Like, if I turn around, it's not going to be over that way. That means it's southwest of me, down and to the left. Um, I should fix that. I think that's a UI error that could lead to some kind of confusion there. But that's southwest, and I'm heading home to Boise, to the right, to the east. So I don't want to go there. That's going to send me in the wrong direction and then Painted Hills. All right, that's sending me in the right direction, basically, and it's 64 miles away, so I can tap, get more information about it. Cool, and all I've got to do is click Navigate. And now I am on my way. I made it to the Painted Hills. This is this amazing area of Oregon. Uh, where there's really just sagebrush and not much else and then out of nowhere there's these incredible mountains with just green and red and yellow all over them uh, it's a cool spot but I don't have any light uh, it's just overcast and and cloudy it's better than just daylight so what I'm doing is I've just set up a time lapse I, I've really enjoyed adding video to my photography repertoire um, and you know, I this is my composition, I'll just show it to you. And you know, as a still photo, not that interesting really. But 
when you can add video to it, sometimes just the motion of the clouds or something makes it an interesting enough place. If it's a cool place and you have the motion, if the light isn't perfect or the composition wouldn't be as epic for a still, sometimes just adding that motion can still make it a, an interesting place to shoot and, and lets you create something where otherwise you'd just kind of go away empty handed.